I wanted to make this video as a follow-up to the career in building inspection video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It will give you a great insight on the training certifications and exposure needed in order to better your chances at attaining a job as a building inspector. My goal is to further aid you in solidifying your chances at achieving a career as a building inspector by presenting you with example interview questions on this video. I want these questions to help you gain an understanding on what organizations could be looking for in individuals, as well as for you to reflect on areas where perhaps you should improve before going into the interview. I have organized them in order that they are usually asked, so here we go with the first question. Please tell us about your education, training, and experience that you feel qualifies you for the position of building inspector. This is a job preparedness, knowledge, skill, and ability based question. This should be one of your most impactful responses. You want to set a confident tone and a great first impression. You will need to describe your education, certification if any, and experience working that demonstrates the ability to perform the duties of the position you are applying for. Tip. If you do not have certifications yet, at the very least, talk about any training you have accomplished or if you are enrolled in relevant classes or any other exposure you have achieved in the industry. This will allow you to at least show that you have taken the initiative to prepare yourself for the job. Question number two. As a building inspector, you may have to give bad news to citizens who may react with anger or inappropriate behavior. Please describe an experience you have had dealing with angry, upset, or rude customers, employees, or members of the public. What did you do? How did you cope? And what was the outcome? This is a communication-based question, and here is where you talk about any experience working with the public, customers, clients, and describe steps you have used to deal with angry, upset, or rude people, which may include actively listening to the person, speaking in a slow, even-toned voice, problem solving, using humor to diffuse the situation, or other non-threatening positive means of resolving a conflict. Tip. If you have not had such encounters with people, at the least, discuss what you would do in such situation. Question number three. Please describe your experience with record keeping, file maintenance, and report preparation. Please include the purpose of such assignments. This is a record keeping, report preparation, filing methods, and records management based question. As a building inspector, you are expected to keep accurate records of projects and assignments, as well as manage such information. As a building inspector, you are also expected to generate inspection reports in both handwritten and digital format. This is where you discuss project or projects and your responsibility to manage related paperwork. The interviewer wants to hear the candidate's experience as it relates to building inspection. Question number four. What is the biggest error in judgment you have made in a previous job? Why did you make it and how did you recover? This is a problem solving analytical based question. The interviewer is looking for a candidate's approach to problem solving or decision making. You're evaluated on whether you took a calculated risk or simply made an unthinking blunder. You are also evaluated on whether you learn from the experience and if you accept responsibility or place blame on others. Question number five, what are some of your strengths and what are some of your weaknesses? This could be considered an honesty question. However, the interviewer evaluates you on how well you know yourself. Typically, people can easily articulate strengths, right? But when it comes to articulating weaknesses, many people do not easily describe them. Or some people will have the tendency to respond by stating that they have no weaknesses. However, this could come across as dishonest because let's face it, we all have some form of professional weakness that we can improve on. When you mention your strengths, be sure to formulate your response relevant to the position you are applying for. For example, if report writing is your strength, emphasize it. However, when it comes to mentioning weaknesses, I like to think of the response as turning a negative into a positive. And what I mean by that is your weakness is your negative and the response you give should be a positive. So in other words, what are you doing to improve the weakness? Here's an example. So the interviewer asks, what are your weaknesses? And the interviewee responds by stating, my weakness is public speaking. 
However, every chance I get, I am the first to volunteer in group speeches, and I have joined the local public speaking organization to better my weaknesses. That is one way to turn a negative into a positive. Do you agree? Now moving on to technical questions often asked. Number one on the technical questions. Which codes are enforced by this jurisdiction? Once again, conducting research in advance will help you with this question. Gather this information ahead of time by simply going on the building department's website or by calling the building department in advance. Number two. What are the model codes to the state codes? The answer to this depends on the state that you are in. Refer to the Career and Building Inspection for additional information. In California, however, here are the model codes to the state codes. Number three, according to the Energy Code, what climate zone is designated for this agency? Climate zones vary widely, so contact your local agency for this information or if you are in California, you can access this search engine to find climate zones by addresses. Number four, what is the maximum rise and run for a set of stairs in a dwelling? This illustration will show you the maximum rise and run. Per the building code, after the final inspection is granted, what is required to be issued prior to occupancy of the building? The response is a certificate of occupancy per the International Building Code 111.1. .1. The follow-up to this question normally is, what information must be included in the certificate of occupancy? Here is a snapshot of what must be included in the certificate of occupancy per the International Building Code 111.2. .1. Number six, what is a ground fault circuit interrupter and give us examples of where they are required. Number seven, what is an arc fault circuit interrupter and give us examples of where they are required? Number eight, what is an R occupancy? And name some of the R occupancy classifications listed in the building code. My advice to you is to become familiar with the occupancy classifications listed in the International Building Code section 310. A tip when it comes to technical questions, however, Keep in mind that the interviewers realize the building codes are very complex and that it is nearly impossible to memorize every section and subsection of the building codes. Therefore, the key here is knowing where to find the information. That is what's critical. And most often by articulating that you know where to find the information is just as good of a response. But be prepared to know where to find this information. Number nine. A final question that is usually asked is, is there anything else you want to add or do you have any questions of us? Similar to the first interview question, you want to leave them with an impactful impression of you. Distinguish yourself from the rest. Here's where you want to reiterate why you are the most prepared and best fit for the job, the contributions you are ready to make, unique skill sets you bring, and reiterate your work ethics. If there is time to ask questions, Feel free to ask questions that are relevant to projects a building inspector is expected to see, the projects they are anticipating, software they may be using. This is where researching the organization will help you formulate your questions. Read the agency's newsletters for valuable information. That concludes the example questions. And once again, these may not be the exact questions you will be asked, but the context the questions they ask you will be similar or you could very well be asked some of these questions. Important note, most all agencies favor heavily an individual with an amical personality. Of course, there are other factors such as work ethics. The reason most agencies look for personality rather than technical abilities is that most agencies feel that you can train someone in the technical aspects of the job. However, you cannot train somebody to have a personable personality. And to that point, Building inspectors are public servants and therefore must treat the public with the utmost respect and assistance. Advice number one, keep a log of your accomplishments and achievements. Whether a project or a task, document it so that you can have examples to use during future interviews. Start doing this now. This will help you accurately express your accomplishments, 
with examples. Advice number two. In the Army, I was taught to know the other. How you apply that concept to interviews is to, in advance, research the agency you are applying for, the size of the agency, who the elected officials are, their goals and priorities. Research the leadership of the organization, that is who you will be reporting to and their superiors, and learn their backgrounds and department objectives. Research the types of developments the agency is anticipating. You can do this by asking for permit activity reports in advance. You can view the How to Obtain Building Department and Code Enforcement Records for help on accessing this information. Permit activity reports are public information and are easily obtained, and they will give you good insight on what types of projects you can expect to see as a building inspector. Advice number three, keep your answers brief and to the point. Pay close attention to the question and only answer the question asked. Always use examples when you can. This will help you provide impactful responses. Now keep in mind that if you are invited to an interview, then there is a very good chance you can get the job. The rest is up to you to let the organization know why you are the best candidate. Well, I hope this information helps you. As always, if you have any questions or if you have any comments, please don't hesitate to leave them on the comment section below. I'm always happy to help. That does it for this video. I wish you all success. Take care, everyone.